Isotope released the latest version of their flagship tool RX on the 1st of September 2020. And in this video, I'll be talking about how useful it is or it could be for podcast production. Hi, I'm Mike, producer of Casefile and Casefile Presents Shows. On this channel, I'm releasing videos on podcasting, audio production, and what it's like to be a podcast producer. So if you enjoy this kind of content, hit subscribe and notification buttons. For people who aren't familiar with Isotope, they make highly respectable, top-of-the-shelf solutions and tools for producers and audio engineers. Everything from mixing, mastering plugins, reverbs, and of course, audio restoration software. On the 1st of September 2020, they've released the latest version of their audio restoration software RX8. And of course, I got it as soon as I woke up. And in this video, I'll be reviewing the latest changes, additions, and what I feel could be helpful for podcast production. Now, on this note, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to do this review, nor I got the software for free. I paid, I bought it. I work on an advanced version, so that's what I will be focusing on as well. I use Isotope stuff for all my work. I actually use only Isotope stuff, to be honest. And in the past, um, just like many audio engineers and producers, I was collecting many plugins, but I got to the point when I thought, I just want to have a handful and then try to master them. I kind of find freedom in this sort of conscious limitation I put on myself. And I stuck with Isotope because I use them the most and I like them. I use Neutron for mixing, Ozone for mastering, and of course RX for audio restoration. I used RX4, I started on RX4 uh, back in my old job at the movie studio, but when I started on podcast production, I bought RX5 and then upgraded from there. I tend to upgrade it with post-production suite as a part of post-production suite rather than single plugins. Anyway, let's get to it. I use RX every day. I have my module chains, my keyboard shortcuts, my workflow, and I was looking forward to this upgrade. I was wondering what new they can come up with. I've watched the initial release video that they put up on YouTube, and I was kind of not disappointed, but I did see they focused on music production element a little bit more than post-production, but I decided to get it anyway. I bought it as a part of post-production suite 5 upgrade. I had two options. I could buy it as an upgrade from RX7 Advance to RX8, that was for $299, or as a part of post-production 4 to 5 upgrade for the same price. And even though I had most of the tools in post-production suite already, I didn't have Nectar 3, which was included in um, post-production 5, so, you know, that was an easy choice. I got the post-production 5 upgrade and install was easy with their Isotope product portal and I authorized to my iLog. First things first, after downloading, after installing RX8, I've opened it as I wanted to import my presets and my settings. I wanted to set up my keyboard shortcuts as well. Now, when I've upgraded from RX6 to RX7, the preset import didn't work as well. I've tried doing it, but it messed up the modules, messed up the settings, and I've ended up manually redoing everything. What pleasantly surprised me was that the presets import from RX7 to RX8 was easy and it worked well. I double-checked all the settings, all the modules, but they were all on point. What's even better, all the keyboard shortcuts were already there, so I didn't really have to do anything. That was a great start. I mentioned RX7 full screen performance in my previous video on a system upgrade, but long story short, my 2015 iMac doesn't like um, RX in a full screen mode. Now I was wondering with RX8, maybe that's changed, maybe the performance will be better, but when I've tested it in a full screen mode, it was still laggy. I had to minimize the window a little bit to you know, make it work as smooth as possible. Fortunately, I am updating my iMac to the latest one, and this should be delivered in a few weeks. So I'll make a video after I set everything up. Hopefully on a new and faster system, I will be able to run RX8 in a full screen mode without any problems. 
Within Rx, I work on module chains with various the clicks, the noise, and others. I find that having two module chains, the same ones, one after the, the another with softer settings work better than just having one with stronger settings. However, I don't know if any of them were actually changed. If they updated the actual algorithms, I don't know. But the modules that I use within module chains look the same. The first and big change is, of course, horizontal scrolling. Now, I use Magic Mouse during my work. However, in the past, to you know, move around within Rx, I had to use zoom in and zoom out keyboard shortcuts and you know, drag the mouse to the edge of the window if I want to move forward or backward. So horizontal scrolling will be a big help. It'll make my life easier and you know, editing much more enjoyable and faster. Interface, it looks the same, so no big changes there. But what about new modules? First one is Guitar The Noise. Now, this video is about podcast production, so I won't be going deep into that, and I don't know if I'll be needing that module in the foreseeable future. I can see it will be helpful for all the guitar players out there. However, the option of buzz or amp removal could be helpful. There's quite a few clips, even on top of my head, that I'm working on, with a lot of buzz on. So there are dialogue clips, but maybe the guitar the noise option could help to clean them up. I don't know, but it would be interesting to find out in the future. The next one is spectral recovery. Now, this one is interesting. What it does, it takes audio clips with limited frequencies, so like Skype recordings or phone calls, and then tries to rebuild higher frequencies. This is the module that actually pushed me to getting the upgrade. At this moment, I'm working on two Case File Presents shows that will be released later on, maybe later this year, maybe next year. They have a lot of problematic clips, like location recording, phone recordings, some kind of archive clips. A lot of them have mediocre quality. Yesterday and today I was working on Draft 2 on one of the projects that has a lot of problematic clips, and I decided to use Spectral Recovery on some of them. So what's the verdict? I like it, but it's quite slow. It kind of reminds me of Dialog Isolate from RX7. It just takes its time with the render. Of course, the performance may change with the arrival of a new system as well. Second of all, it doesn't work 100% perfect yet especially if you set the value of added frequencies quite high. It seems to work great on sibilance and S's, so words like she, search, case. But the thing is, it makes uh, these sounds, this sibilant sound, kind of prominent, and they sound a little bit out of place. So what I've been doing is I've set the amount of added frequencies quite low to around 20%, and I've also uh, moved the balance of the stimulants to minus 50. It's bad, but it still makes some of them stand out a bit. I had to then erase them with insert silence. When it works, it adds a little bit of presence to these clips, a little bit of intelligibility, but it's not a game changer. However, I think that the technology behind this idea could be a game changer in the future. Because just imagine if they could restore these clips, they sound natural. That could be absolutely amazing. They've also improved music rebalance, which I don't use. However, that could have been very useful for me in the past when I was remixing Silent Waves podcast and I only had stereo MP3 files to work with. Loudness, I don't use it within RX. I use um, the standalone loudness control plugin. Wow and Flutter module. That looks cool. However, again, this is you know aimed uh, at music production rather than podcast production or dial production. A few more that were improved as well were Dham and Dialog Isolate. Now I've used Dham in the past, but I wasn't impressed with it even in RX7. Now I'm working, as I said, on a couple of case file present shows, and one of them has a lot of clips that. Have a kind of prominent hum. I was working on it yesterday and I decided to try out the new improved the hum module. I was pleasantly surprised. It actually cleared the clips quite well. 
So I've run it twice, one in adaptive mode and one with learn render. Both were helpful and uh, made the clips better. So I will be using the new improved DHAM in the future for sure. Now dialog isolate. I love this module and I use it all the time in RX7. However, it's kind of slow and it takes ages to render, especially on my 2015 iMac. I was excited to look what they've improved. And when I was going through some clips yesterday and today, clips that I've already cleaned with Dialog Isolate as well, I've run it again with that new version. It did help, it made it much better. On top of that, the performance was better as well. It was improved, the render was much faster. That was the highlight from testing RX, the new Dialog Isolate thing. Producing case file, I'm spoiled. The show, consists of one narrator, he records in his vocal booth, he has a nice microphone, so I'm used to good recordings. But Case File Presents shows are more of a challenge, and they have a ton of audio clips, location recordings, phone recordings, archives, you know, things like that, of a varied audio quality. I need more than just the click or simple the noise in my arsenal and RX8 offers just that. They've improved a few more things, they've added a few more things as well. Overall performance, I think it's great, it's much better than RX7 and even when I run my module chain on some of the dialogues, I felt that it cleaned them up a little bit better than RX7. I don't know what, but I think they fix some things under the hood as well. Okay, so what is the verdict? Well, I'll keep going at it and I'll probably keep discovering improvements every day. It's a solid update, however, it does feel like they focused on music production rather than post-production this time. Maybe because the modules they already have for post-productions is what's enough? I'm not sure. Maybe they just keep updating them and that's it. We won't get anything new. Questions are, what should you do? Should you get the upgrade? Look, I'm excited for Isotope machine learning technology and I love their stuff. I also do this every day and I use their tools every day. And so for myself, it was kind of a no brainer. However, I also understand that their plugins, that their software is kind of pricey, especially the advanced versions. I would suggest you download their trial, their demo version, and then test it, try it out. And then have a look if it helps your workflow, if it helps in your podcasting, and also note down which modules you actually use because they have few different tiers of their software. They have elements, they have standards, and then of course the most expensive advanced versions. Isotope RX8 is not a revolution, especially if you're upgrading from RX7, but it's a solid progression and it makes work much more enjoyable, at least for me. That's it for today. I'm Mike from Mike Mingus Production. If you enjoyed this kind of video, if you want to learn more about podcasting and audio production, check out the rest of my channel as well as my website, mikemigas.com. For now, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.